it's a unique privilege to be a dad. We're a strong knit family. We're close, we have great times together. And all the way through the kid's childhood, things have gone well. It all changed though for us when I got a phone call from my wife to say Jacob had a brain hemorrhage. It just made my world collapse. Doctors weren't going to operate unless they had to. And so for six weeks, we just spent increasingly more time in Leeds General Infirmary. And it probably goes with the territory that I'm in as a head teacher. I was trying to create solutions and I was trying to find things that would maybe negate the need for surgery or speed up his recovery. But you're feeling rubbish because you, you're not able to influence the change that you need. Within six weeks of that first phone call, the neurosurgeons called us to say if we didn't take surgical action immediately, there was a real chance he could die on the ward. It was a very sobering moment when a 16-year-old is signing their, their own consent for an unknown number of hours of brain surgery in the back of the head, face down. And as a dad, you have this perhaps this self-inflicted expectation that you will cope and you will be strong for your family. But I've got to tell you inside, I didn't think he was going to make it. I was brought up in a church-going family and my desperation meant I had to cling on to my faith. That verse from Isaiah 43 talks about being between a rock and a hard place. That's where I was. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end, because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Saviour. And I had to believe that in my world caving in, he was going to be my Saviour, and he was going to be Jake's Saviour. We were allowed into intensive care once Jake had come out of surgery. He could speak, he could move, he was definitely alive. And I guess there was sort of 98% trust that we'd solved the problem and he was now going to embrace life to its fullest. But at the back of my mind, there was probably a, a nagging doubt. Is he? Is he recovered? And Nine months after his surgery, Jake started to show some of the symptoms again. Absolutely blinding headaches that made him cry because they were so painful. And within about 18 months of his first operation, his neurosurgeon said basically, you have no choice, we're going to have to operate. It was going to boil down to he had surgery or he died. brain surgery, you know, it's, it, it's complicated, it's six inches into his head, you know, it's above the fourth ventricle, you know, these are places that neurosurgeons don't want to go, they don't want to touch it. I was an emotional wreck. I didn't lose my faith, but I really did think I was going to lose him. So the night before his second operation was another long, long night. Psalm 91 talks about God, you're my refuge, I trust in you and I'm safe. And I remember reading that psalm on repeat all night. And that morning we drove to Leeds and it was the weirdest, most surreal journey that we've ever had in a car, I think, because it was the quietest journey we've ever had. And yet there was still a connection with, with total peace that this was going to get resolved and it was going to be a good outcome. For me, that was probably the first time ever that I can say 100% that I believed that God had it under control. Because actually, when we went back to see Jake 10 hours later, he wasn't recognising us, he was howling. And yet I knew he'd, he'd come through it. 
that day I'd come from having elements of doubt and elements of fear that I just couldn't quench to a point of total trust and belief that the surgery was going to do the deed and he was going to recover and it was going to end. Jesus was with me throughout this journey. I didn't always believe it, I didn't always trust it, but looking back and reflecting on where we were, where we've come and what we've been through, I know that it was him who carried us individually and as a family all the way through. Faith is beyond logic and I just know God pulled him out of this mess. And so for me, I think this whole journey has been recognising that his commission to me is to lay the things that challenge me in front of him and trust him to find a way when I can't seem to find a way. And in the story of Jake's illness and his recovery, it's been God's way, not my way. <laughs>